Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody out there and everybody in here. We're glad that y'all came to join us. This is, um, like I said, this is like a message that had to get split because there was just so much to it. And um, I'm excited about the things that God is revealing to us and showing us. And, you know, all you got to do is ask him to reveal great revelation to you by his Holy Spirit. Just say, Lord, show me your marvelous and hidden mysteries, things that I know not. And he'll reveal things to you, okay? He wants the body to work together. And uh, I pour through this stuff and I do a lot of research and hopefully I'm doing a lot of legwork and saving you from having to do all that, okay? Because I've, I spend a lot of time on this with the Lord and he's showing amazing things, things that I never realized were going on in this world, okay? And so today... In the last message, I talked about um, aliens, okay, the UFO conferences and how they're pushing this alien agenda. They're higher evolved than we are, and we need to work with them. They're going to help stabilize our planet. And we talked about Obama saying we had a reptilian brain and all this kind of thing, right? Okay, today I'm going to be talking about the Vatican, the Catholic Church having their telescope, Lucifer. And then I'll be talking about CERN, C-E-R-N. It's a, um, you know, big magnetic machine which they're running all kinds of tests with. And we're going to get into that and find out what they're really trying to do. Okay? And, you know, I just want us to remember that the things that they're doing, these people who are having these telescopes, having this machinery, having all this stuff, they're not walking with the Lord for the most part. I mean, I don't know every single individual, but as a whole, when you stand back and look at the big picture, uh-uh, they are not. It's not a godly operation, any of it, okay? And when you learn more about what the Vatican has, what they're doing, who they're controlling, and, I mean, it's just, it gets downright, I mean, it's filthy, with all their black ops and the things that I'm going to share. I'm going to share a letter with you today that, I mean, it floored me when I found it. We got to realize how, how these people are. It's not the movies. It's real life, putting a hit out on somebody and doing the crazy stuff that they do. So let's, let's just go ahead and, and get into it, y'all. I know that um, a lot of this I heard on the Jim Baker show about CERN when I get to that. He's one of the shows that I've seen that is actually showing stuff that's going on right now. A lot of people aren't exposing these things, okay? But from that, learning about CERN, um, and I might have heard this on there too, Tom Horn, because he's been a guest on there. And he's a very good reference on all of this. It was Tom Horn, I think the guy's name is Chris Putnam. They went up to what I'm fixing to talk about first, this Mount Graham Observatory, okay? That's where the Vatican has this huge telescope, all right? Now, we're fixing to talk about this thing. Okay, we're going to skip on to something different. Remember how we've been talking about the Vatican and the Pope and the Catholic Church and the militant Jesuit priests and all of that? and what they're up to, stuff that we haven't even known. We showed last week how they created that false religion, and we showed how they um, helped to manipulate and create Islam for their benefit because they want Jerusalem, okay? Now, and not only that, they're like, uh, we'll just say this, they got some cojones that they are wanting to like, they want to go up against God. That's how bad they think they are. So listen to this. There is an uh, observatory. It's called Mount Graham Observatory. It is interesting to note that the Vatican has a huge telescope. Remember, we got to quit thinking about this place as a church, the Catholic Church and the Pope. and I, th There ain't no church involved. I'm telling you what, they are political, they're government, they're, I mean, and the church is false religion, so it's not even in there, okay? So now they got this huge telescope. They just so happened to name the uh, cameras on the telescope Lucifer. Yeah, this ain't the first involvement or run-in that the Catholic Church has with Lucifer. Right. 
Remember, I forget, uh, probably my Catholic messages when I was studying that out. Um, I showed where they were, stand, uh, maybe it was their Eucharist or something. And they were standing up there and they were singing in Latin. And you can hear them singing, praising Lucifer. Yeah. And here's their little leg to stand on because they're so wrapped up in all this Lucifer business. I know why they're wrapped up in it. We've just been showing that the last few weeks. That's who they worship. Okay? But listen to this. They say those objects can be detected with the help of Lucifer. A beastly set of supercooled new infrared cameras, also known as large binocular telescope, uh, near infrared utility with camera and integral field unit for ex extra, extra galactic research. The first camera, they call it Lucifer 1. Okay. Now, you want to know why it's called Lucifer 1? Because they're getting ready to name the other one Lucifer 2. They got no shame in their game. Right. None. Okay? It was fitted to the telescope in 2010. And Lucifer 2 is set to be installed as earlier as this year. It's probably already loaded up on the thing. Give me a break. Nobody thought of the possibility, listen to this, they, uh, they were questioned like, why'd y'all name that thing Lucifer? Of course they had their little story ready. No, the, the guy says, nobody thought of the possibility that anybody could take offense at the name of Lucifer. It's because they're not Christian. Listen to this. After all, even if you forget about the completely innocent connotations as in Morning Star, and I already talked about that in messages ago, or St. Lucifer or of Sardinia. Yeah. See, they do that too. Oh, well, we're talking about that saint. Mm -hmm. And they said, and just think of evil Lucifer. There are other examples such as NHL team called the New Jersey Devils that nobody seems to mind. Wow. wow. So now you're standing in front of your mama going, well, they did it. And she's like, so that meant you had to do it too? Wow. That's worldly. That NHL team is a worldly team. They're not out there serving Jesus Christ. Nope. So now you're talking to somebody who's supposed to be a man of God, supposed to be serving the Lord God Almighty, and they've named their uh, equipment out there Lucifer. And then he's saying, well, they've got an NHL team, the devils, and nobody minds that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I heard this recently, and I forgot who said it, but listen to this. This is true. He said... Um, if you are a blood-bought Christian, you're not going to name your cat Lucifer. No. So take the same thing, or your telescope, that's right. You see that? And you're not going to be up there singing in Latin. No. You're going to avoid Lucifer because you know what that even was about, okay? So um, the people who are still going along with the Catholic Church on this stuff, I mean, you're kidding yourselves when they try to twist around speaking Lucifer out. It's like they think it's a joke. Ha <laughs> we're getting away with it. And, yeah. you know, isn't that kind of stuff so cool when you think you're really pulling something over on the public? Uh -huh. Okay, and the sad thing is there's a lot of people stuck in, uh, not stuck in it, they're choosing to be in it, that uh -huh. you need to quit playing games and you need to realize if they're going around glamorizing Lucifer, you need out of that. Amen. Okay? Um, that's blasphemy to, against God. Mm -hmm. Outright. Um, so, in a twist of irony, Lucifer's, which is that telescope thing, remember, his neighbors are Catholic Jesuits. Uh -oh. Well, wow. So, next to this telescope situation on the Mount Graham Observatory, right next to it, you've got those Jesuits, the ones who will beat you down and, you know, take orders to get a hit out on you. Right. Okay, they're right next door. The, um, they're, at, they're a place that they're at is called VAT. That stands for Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. Wasn't enough that we have this one. We got to have that one too. They got a lot of them going around. Remember that one that, um, that one's manned by Jesuit astronomers. There's one in Australia that I spoke about, uh, a lady that had prophecy from God, and she felt like that one was owned by them, but I couldn't, I couldn't um, verify that one. But these two are. And you think, why do they need all this telescope? Why do they need, you know, what is a religion or church or whatever trying to, okay? Because that's where we got to get out of our minds and go, that's right, they're government, they're political, they're militant, they're, they need to see what's going on, what's coming, what's for themselves, okay? Because they can't trust nobody else. They need to know. 
Okay, now Tom Horn, he went up there. Um, him and, uh, I forget the guy's name, but Chris something, they went up there together and did an interview with these people. And he said that they spoke with the Jesuit at the Vatican Observatory who told him, astronomers there, he flat out told them this, they're searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. That's aliens, remember, extraterrestrial, same thing, which is demons, okay, and planets inside other solar systems. So they're not up there doing anything good for us. They're up there looking for demons. Right. Okay, which they are the <laughs> they are the demon, okay? Now, even the Jesuit priest told them that the number one thing they're searching for right now is other Earth-like planets that might host extraterrestrial intelligence. And he says, when they went to that, we wanted to talk to the Jesuits face to face. He's getting pretty risky, isn't he? We were actually astonished at how both they and the LBT, which is the one over there, Lucifer one, they spoke very openly. He said, in fact, they told us that nobody in ac academia now any longer believes that humans are the only intelligent life on this planet that are this galaxy. Nobody, none, zero. You see how I tell you they're driving that agenda. They're fixing to be making these. I mean, they're, the news people already know that the Pope's fixing to be announcing extraterrestrials. Okay, they're talking about, you got Obama talking about the reptilian brain. There's too much hints and, like we said, seeds being thrown out, baiting us, okay, right. trying to brainwash us. So, Genesis 1, 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves. My point with that scripture is, because they're saying there's other intelligent life other than just where we're at, okay? Who did God say to have dominion over all those things? He said us. He said that to Adam, human, okay? Now, he didn't give that dominion to anybody else or anything else. When Adam fell, when he sinned, Yes, at that time, then Satan, the prince of the earth right now, the powers of the air, right? right? For a short time till Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom on earth, God only created one intelligent being that was made in his own image. Okay? And, and I want to say something for animals' defense. Little animals are smart too. Okay? They can think and they can process, but they were not made in his image. Okay, because some people just act like they're just ridiculous. And you can tell your little animal can communicate to you. Yeah. So they are, they're not just, you know, but they're not the ones that have dominion. We do. So this junk about there's somebody else out there that's in, no, uh, no, we were it. We're it's it. us. That's right. Amen. They said that all academia now accepts the fact that it's really just a matter of time having to do with us locating life on other planets. And not just organism. They're not talking about that pond scum. They're talking about, and they say, intelligent life. But it, in, intelligent life literally trillions of years ahead of us in terms of their evolution. See, we wrapped right back around to evolution because we're so far behind in evolving because that's how God created us to evolve. Wrong. He created us. He breathed his life into us. He told us. He gave us our direction. We're to follow and obey him. And that's how you evolve, if you want to say evolve, because when you get out of line with him, you done done it, just like your mama saying, get over here, we're going to line up and get a spanking. Um, there ain't no evolution in the situation, okay? This, um, that Vatican's telescope, I got a picture of it. I mean, when you see this stuff, and the money that they're pouring into this, Construction of this, this Mount Graham Observatory thing, they call it MGIO, began in 1989. Currently operates and maintains facilities for three scientific organizations. The first two telescopes of the VAT, and then there's something Heinrich Hertz Sublimiter Telescope, and then the large, the satanic Lucifer one, okay? That's the three. 
And it says that one of the world's largest and most powerful telescopes began operations using mirrors independently in 2004, which with joint operations between the two mirrors beginning in 2008. In 1984, the University of Arizona and the Vatican selected Mount Graham as a site for a complex of 18 telescopes. The fact that this is a sacred place for the Apache was not taken into consideration. It's like we want it and we're taking it. Too bad for you. Okay? To get around the legal barriers of the American Indian Religious Freedoms Act, the university hired a lobbying firm to put pressure on Congress to remove this and other roadblocks. The area in question is administered by the U.S. Forest Service. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the Vatican, if they want it, they're going to take it. Sure. Won't care who you are and what you got and whatever. We're doing it. And if you open your mouth, we can shut you up. Right. Okay? They have an observatory staff, which is officially supported by the Vatican City State. The Vatican Observatory Foundation is supported by private donations. And listen to this. One of the important duties of the church is to maintain an accurate calendar. Yeah. That's why we need all these telescopes. Really? They really sell some junk and expect us to buy it. I'm telling you what. Um, they already admitted they was looking for E.T. on the thing. Come on. Anyway, but this is the official report, right? Now, the Vatican, and like I said, they're, they're no more interested in calendar dates than the man in the moon. All they got to do is copycat the Jews' calendar, and you got it down. I mean, seriously. They are getting ready to push their alien agenda, and all of that, remember, flows right in with New World Order. Because they're going to come in, the aliens are. They're going to help us evolve and get this planet under control. And, and when everybody's raptured out, that's the bride of Jesus Christ, and the people are asking, what happened? What happened to those people? Well, don't you know? You are chosen to stay because you're more highly spiritual and evolved is what they're going to say. And those ones, they went ahead and took them out right now. And then they're going to be like, oh, okay. It's just going to be like they got their little plan of action and their story together. Now listen to this. we got to remember, uh, even back to talking about Alberto Rivera, who was that uh, Jesuit priest who, thank the Lord, got out of it. But remember, they put a hit out on him, black ops, and they were coming after him, trying to kill him, poison him, run him off the road, all kinds of stuff. Okay, and you think this is not true. I, there, I even heard a scientist this week saying that their lives were being threatened. And we're going to talk about scientists maybe next week. I say this all the time, but there's so much to this, y'all. But I want y'all to hear this in my research. This was a letter written from one of the scientists says, Dear Mr. Bell, and I can only assume this guy was like with a radio station that he's writing to. He says, I have listened to your program off and on for around two years now. Whenever I get downtime, I have some disturbing information, and I felt that your program would be the perfect vehicle with which to distribute what I have. I have been under the employ of the Vatican for over five years. I have done what could best be described as counterintelligent work. Okay, CIA, FBI, remember, they're flowing in all of that. Okay, for the church. Yeah. I am a man of God, and please believe me when I tell you that the information I have is genuine and very serious. Without going into too much detail about my former employers, I will briefly tell you that I have had a top-level security clearance in the Vatican for quite some time. Most of the work I have done, regrettably, falls into the realm of black ops. And I will, go, I will not go into detail about that now. Around six months ago, I was working at a data terminal in a highly restricted area following a case that I had just completed when I stumbled onto something that nearly made my heart stop. Please pay attention here. This is where it gets strange. This is what he's saying. I uncovered a heavily encrypted subsystem that was surprisingly well hidden. I found that it was only accessible through the terminal I was at and one other terminal. I must point out that the area I was in was not an area that I routinely used. After two minutes of trying to get into the system, the whole lab shut itself down and I was booted off the terminal. Not wanting to raise any eyebrows, I decided to leave and come back later that night. The strange thing was, when I came back, there were armed guards standing sentry outside of the lab. I must say that it is not unusual to see guards roaming the Vatican. 
but it is very unusual for them to stand sentry at a lab, much less while armed. Over the next month, I managed to slip in unnoticed only once, and after I had found what I came for, I understood the security. It took me a good deal of time to break into the system, and when I did, I wished I hadn't. When I entered the system, I came across a file entitled Wormwood, yeah, Wormwood. with a question mark, okay? And, and he says, yes, with a question mark. He said, thinking it to be a text file, I brought up the file with the intent of copying so I could read it later. He wanted to get out of there with this information so he could get it home and, you know, okay. What happened next was truly remarkable. The file sort of deteriorated into a series of command lines that lasted approximately two minutes. Once it was done running, there it was. I had found a direct link up to the Hubble Space Telescope. Not only that, but it was pointed directly at the comet hale -Bopp. The program was running some kind of analysis, taking directional notes, projecting path of travel, etc. After realizing what I had discovered, I started searching and came across an email data trail that led directly to the office of the Pope himself. Well, 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 we're not surprised. What was discussed, I cannot know. Over the next two weeks, I began to uncover evidence that the Vatican is very aware of the existence of the companion, and it's very worried about it. I began to copy files and pictures that were present at the terminal when I found a report from the United Nations to the Vatican as well as a report from NASA regarding their concerns. Remember that, um, remember that I talked a couple of weeks ago about prophecy that's been spoken to people of God, and a couple of ladies were told by the Lord that there was an asteroid coming. Okay, this all sounds like this is tying in with what this guy's talking about because they got NASA watching and they're watching. They got all these telescopes on this stuff and they're worried. So he said, it's very obvious to me that a great many people and entities know of the companion and are doing their best to keep it quiet, very quiet, as the next part of my story illustrates. And remember, um, talking about keeping it quiet, that lady that looked out on NASA, as far as she could look out, it was showing it doesn't come anywhere near us. But then her ex-military friend called his friend who works in another country and verified, yes. And they were saying it's like two and a half miles wide and all this stuff. Yeah. But as far as the American public, there's been no announcements, no warnings, no, you know, we're just la, 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 everything's great. He says, I had found another file that I wanted to look at, but it was independently encrypted. At the time that I discovered it, I had already been online at the terminal for some time. So I decided to copy the file encrypted and decode it at my leisure. As I was leaving the lab, I was approached by two of the Pope's top aides and was asked to meet them later in the evening. I didn't feel comfortable about the situation yet because you know. Really? Come with us. You know what was fixing to happen there. He said, I didn't feel comfortable about the situation so I agreed and told them that I needed to shower and would join them later. I haven't been back to the Vatican since. He got on the run. He got his stuff and got out of there. He knew the stuff he was on to, okay? He said, I found out about a week later through some old friends and contacts that a contract had been placed on my life. Two days later, my mother and father were killed in a car crash in France. Three days after that, my brother and sister were killed when their single-engine plane went down on the east coast of the U.S. I've been on the run for a very long time now, and I'm still trying to decode the file that I have in my possession. Approximately 10 copies have been distributed to friends in the field in the event that I should disappear. I do not fear for my life, as I am very adept at not being found. However, I believe that the world needs to know of the information that I have. I would be willing to share all that I have with you, Mr. Bell, the guy at the radio station. But you need to understand that your life could be in danger if you were to go public with what I give you. I apologize for being so vague, but I feel it necessary at this point in time. If you would like the information, say so over the air when you get this letter. If I am not listening, someone will get the information to me, as there is no safe way for you to contact me at this point in time. I await your response. Okay, it said priest. 
He didn't give a name. And it says, end of letter to Art Bell. And it says, Art declined. And I want to tell you something. And the, the research and stuff I've been doing, I have run across people that are honestly being threatened with their lives and that are honestly losing their lives. And all this has been going on, and it didn't just start. It's been going on. I, I'm just learning about it is what my deal is. And, I, and I'm wanting y'all to learn about it because this is some sick, twisted stuff. It's not just the movies. This stuff is real life. And again, what I want to say about that, when he was discovering that Wormwood stuff, and they got all these telescopes researching, and they don't want nobody knowing nothing. They don't want us in a panic. They don't want us coming against them. They don't want a rising up. They don't want the people in the know. Remember I said they change history books. They get rid of books. They keep information to themselves. They don't let us know. That's a type of brainwashing when they feed you what they want you to know. Revelation 8, 11 says, And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, see, when I first discovered that a few weeks ago, that uh, that one lady believes that telescope in Australia, they got a project named Wormwood, and I thought, well, you know, that's trying to make prophecy happen work. But then I thought, you know what? They can't push it. God is the one that determines when it's going to fall and when it's going to come through the atmosphere and hit the earth, not them. Okay, so, but the thing is, they're ready. They have already got the thing named so that when it does happen, they got it coordinating with the Bible. See how I said they're in, in God's face? They're like, bring it. Okay, now we're going to talk about CERN, C-E-R-N. It's the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It's derived from the name, this is what they say, excuse me, Concil European, oh, I'm sorry, is a European research organization that operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the world. It was established in 1954. The organization is based in a northwest suburb of Geneva on the Franco-Swiss border. has 21 European member states. Okay, and I got a picture of how big it is and the layout of it. It's huge, okay? And Israel is the first and currently only non-European country granted full membership. This, this thing, okay, is called, they call it CERN, C-E-R-N. Now, you have to know these people are up to no good, so that's when you've got to start looking at symbols and you've got to start looking at names and you've got to start thinking what were they thinking when they named it CERN. Okay, and, I, and shout out to Jim Baker, by the way, because his program is the first place I heard of CERN. I didn't know anything about it until I saw it on there. Okay, and, and they uh, did their homework too because they were talking about there was a god which means demon, because there's only one God, called Cernunos. It's the conventional name given in the Celtic studies, or Celtic studies, to depictions of the horned God, sometimes referred to as Hearn the Hunter, of Celtic polytheism. Okay? And I got a picture of him sitting there with his little horns on his head, being his little horned God holding what looks like a snake and doing his thing. Okay? This is where they got the name CERN for this big machine. So if you connect the dots, I mean, everything in this world is spiritual. It's either about serving the Lord or it's about serving Satan. So now they've done name the thing after a demonic God. You already know right there they're up to no good. Okay, now we're going to find out what exactly they say they're doing in, in there with all this. CERN's main function is to provide the particle accelerators and other infrastructure needed for high-energy physics research. As a result, numerous experiments have been conducted, uh, constructed at CERN as a result of international collaborations. So it's not just those, I mean, it's the whole world in this, right? And don't we know, haven't we already learned by now that the government, the top of the tops, the elite, they're in all this satanic idol worship, anything to go up against God and get in his face. It's also the place where the World Wide Web was first implemented. And don't think they're not using the web for their benefit to spy on all of us, 
to get your picture, to see your, you know, all of that. Facebook, that Zuckerberg kid, he's Illuminati. They're all working and interlinked and connected together, okay? The main site at May, Mayron has a large computer facility containing powerful data processing facilities, primary for, primarily for experimental data analysis. Because of the need to make these facilities available to researchers elsewhere, it has historically been a major wide area networking hub. Okay, the main component or machine part in this thing is called the Large Hadron Collider. Most of the activities at CERN currently involve operating the Large Hadron Collider. We'll call it LHC for short. And the experiments for it the LHC represents a large-scale, worldwide scientific cooperation project. And we got a picture of this thing, and this thing is huge. And when you look at it, this, this particular picture that I have, it looks like big spider legs going out, or a star, either, either way, okay? They're, they designed this thing, they had uh, particular things in mind when they put it together like they did. The LHC tunnel is located 100 meters underground in the region between Geneva Airport and nearby Jura Mountains. Seven experiments, and they list them off, will be performed on the collider. Each of them will study particle collisions from a different aspect and with different technologies. The initial beams were injected into the LHC August of 2008. The first attempt to uh, circulate a beam through the entire LHC was on September 2008, the 10th. But the system failed because of a faulty magnet connection, and it was stopped for repairs September 19, 2008. The LHC resumed operation November the 20th, 2009, by successfully circulating two beams, each with an energy of 3.5 trillion electron volts, the challenge for the engineers was then to try to line up the two beams so that they smashed into each other. See, all of this stuff is just like, oh, Lord, I glaze over. But we're getting there. Listen to this. This is like firing two needles across the Atlantic and getting them to hit each other. So it's, very, it's precision, okay? According to LHC's main engineer, Steve Myers, director of whatever, who, we don't even care about all his credentials, now, uh, on March the 30th of 2010, they successfully smashed two proton particle beams of energy, resulting in a 7 TeV event. However, this was just the start of what was needed for the expected discovery of the Higgs boson. Now we're getting down to what they're trying to discover out there. When the 7 TeV experimental period ended, the LHC revved to 8 TEVs for this direction and for that direction. That big round circle, it goes around until it hits, okay? And uh, it says, let's see. So in early 2013, the LHC was deactivated for a two-year period of maintenance to strengthen the huge magnets inside the accelerator. Eventually, it will attempt to create 14 TEV events. In July of 2012, CERN scientists announced the discovery of a new subatomic particle that was possibly the much sought after Higgs bosom. So you're like, what is Higgs bosom? Because I didn't know. Believed to be essential for formation of the universe. They're out there trying to get particles to crash together because they're trying to prove, they're trying to disprove the Bible. They're trying to say God wasn't the creator. He didn't just speak and then things were because he said be and, and it was. They're trying to say none of that's true. And they're over here trying to, it's like they're trying to do the Big Bang Theory here. Remember, you got evolution on one hand, you got Big Bang on the other. Which camp do you want to pick, right? Okay, that's what they're out there supposedly trying to do. Okay, then uh, in March 2013, CERN announced that the measurements performed on the newly found particle allowed it to conclude that this is a Higgs boson. So see, and they're also trying to discredit everybody that believes in God. They're trying to say, no, now we've proved it. This is what created the universe. We have shown it now. Throw your Bibles away because that's all rubbish and junk, okay? Listen to this. God did speak and said, 
light be, and it was. He is the creator. On April the 5th of 2015, now that's not very long ago, y'all, a couple of months ago, after two years of maintenance and consolidation, the LHC, that Large Hadron Collider, restarted for a second run. Proton beams successfully circulated in the, in the rings, the first ramp to the record-breaking energy of 6.5 TeV was on April the 10th, 2015. So they've got this thing cranked back up, okay? Outside the LEP and LHC experiments, most are officially named and numbered after the site where they're located. Remember that big ring? You have different locations on this thing where they're working and doing different experiments and stuff. Okay, and one thing I thought was funny was they were uh, looking at the production of so-called charmed particles charmed, enchanted, those kind of things are like uh, spells and casting, you know, the names and the terminology, the things that they're using on, on stuff, okay? Um, so, okay, we're going to skip all of this uh, stuff, and it says, listen to this, most of the roads on the CERN campus are named after famous physicists, such as Richard Feynman, Niels Bohr, and Albert Einstein. Now, I want to talk about somebody here. There is a physicist. His name is Richard Seed, and there I've got a, a picture of him here. He is a physicist and a human cloning researcher. Remember I was talking about we're going to get into the cloning situation next week? He's on here, and he is holding a, it's a double cloned statue that was given to him because he's all into this cloning stuff, of the god of health, Yigia, presented to him by the Greek Scientist Union. They're all in this stuff. Okay, that's an idol. But listen to what he said. This is Richard Seed, and he's part of this big project. He said, we are going to become gods, period. If you don't like it, get off. If you're going to interfere with me becoming a god, then we're going to have warfare. That's pretty strong, y'all. That's what they're out there doing. Let's not, let's not play games about this, okay? They're not up to anything good. Um, another guy, Robert J. Sawyer, a science fiction novel called Flash Forward. At CERN, the Large Hadron Collider Accelerator is performing a run to search for the Higgs bosom when the entire human race sees themselves 21 years and six months in the future. They're trying to discover time travel also, okay? John Titer, a self-proclaimed time traveler, alleged that CERN would invent time travel in 2001. CERN is de depicted in the visual novel Anaheim, series Steins Gate and CERN. Anyway, it's a shadowy organization that has been researching time travel in order to restructure the control of the world. Remember how I said the Illuminati, they put the books out, they put the movies out, they put the word out, before we, the public, know what's going on. Same thing here. They're writing books and publishing stuff and doing stuff and then acting like, oh, we're just trying to find out, right? And I already heard, I think, on the Jim Baker show, they're wanting something to come through that portal. Sure. They're trying to open it up. They want something to come through or they want to send something through. Either way, they'll be happy. Right. Just something, okay? That's a part of summoning satanic powers. And I'm, we're going to get there. So uh, Megadeth, I guess that's a rock and roll band or something, they use that super collider on their album cover. So this thing, it, you know, there's not anything good about it. And there's, I've got two different pictures of Megadeth's al album cover. One of them has a skeleton with safety glasses on in the middle of this thing while it's spinning. Okay? There is a dance that they did called Symmetry, Cerns, Lord of the Dance. Part of this video has somebody dancing inside a circle of salt. That's a magic circle. Okay? A magic circle is a circle or a sphere of space marked out by uh, practitioners of many branches of ritual magic, which they generally believe will contain energy and form a sacred space or will provide them a form of magical protection or both. It may be marked physically drawn in salt or chalk, for example, or merely visualized. Its spiritual significance is similar to that of man mandala and yantra, 
in some Eastern religions. Satanists and witches do their evocations inside of circles. That what they did, this little video promoting their CERN machine and all of this, you got it. We got to pay attention, y'all. That salt circle, all the whole thing is satanic. That's their little representation of we want something coming through this portal. Okay? Outside this facility, they have Shiva, and that is known as the great god. That's one of the main deities of Hinduism. He and Shiva sounds like a woman to me, but he is the supreme god within Sh Shaivism, one of the three most influential denominations in contemporary Hinduism. Hinduism is totally satanic. That's all about idols. That's all about demons. That's all about not serving the Lord. He's one of five primary forms of God in the Smarta tradition, and he's called the destroyer or the transformer among the Trimurti and the Hindu trinity of the primary aspects of the divine, okay? This dancing Shiva out there coming out of this lotus flower that represents the emergence of Horus, who is known as Apollo or Shiva. Now, in Revelation, this is where all this is going, which I'm getting to. All of this is demonic. Uh, that, that's who they're lifting up and worshiping with all this stuff. The Hebrew term Abaddon and its Greek equivalent Apollyon appears in the Bible as both a place of destruction and as the name of an angel. In the Hebrew Bible, Abaddon is used with reference to a bottomless pit, often appearing alongside the place, Sheol, which is hell, meaning the realm of the dead. In the New Testament book of Revelation, an angel called Abaddon is described as the king of an army of locusts. His name is first transcribed in Greek, whose name is Abaddon, and then it's translated uh, as destroyer, Apollyon. The Latin Vulgate, they have additional notes that says, being the Latin word, anyway, destroyer. In one clip that I watched, a group of people were in a news studio talking about CERN, and one guy said, we are at the basis of discovering our reality and our existence here. See, they think that machine is going to help them discover why we're here. The people interviewing him had asked what he thought, and he said he had faith in the people at CERN. I don't know where his faith in God was, faith in the people at CERN. One of the news guys said the most important thing is to keep pushing our boundaries. They started this thing up, Nissan the 15th, just after the blood moon that we just had. It's the, the machine has the world's largest magnets. It operates at 271 degrees Celsius. It's real pretty. When you look at the pictures, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's ginormous. The one there had a little bitty guy standing there. The thing is, it's real pretty, but it's up to no good. So they're trying to disprove the Big Bang Theory, but to show that there are parallel universes. That's what they're wanting to do. They want something to come through that portal from either side, and they don't care which side. Revelation 1.18, I am he that lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. They want to go through that portal or have something come through, and I want to tell you what, Jesus Christ holds the keys. Nobody's going through, through or coming through, till Jesus Christ opens it up and says, okay, all right? The CERN machine is not going to open the gates of hell or do nothing unless Jesus allows it. He holds those keys. Matthew 16, 18, and I, Jesus, say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, remember that Ronald Reagan made a statement in the speech from 1987 that the world would uh, unite if we were facing an outside threat like aliens? And all of these people, the uh, elite Jesuits, Illuminati, atheists, they're trying to set the stage to explain what's going to happen when we go in the rapture, okay? They're putting the message out pretty clear about aliens, which are demons. And then, paired with this machine, they can back their story better because all they got to do is say, aliens took us because we weren't uh, as spiritual or as evolved as the people that were chosen to stay. 
Or they'll say they had that machine cranked up and spinning and doing their stuff and it zapped out certain people maybe because of weaknesses in their genetics or whatever, okay? So they've got two things going. They can blame it on CERN or they can blame it on aliens as to what happens when the rapture happens, when Jesus takes his bride, okay? The world is working to have a story ready for damage control when the people are left and they start asking what happened to them, okay? Um, they're trying to open the gates of hell and even the abyss. The satanic powers that are influencing them have talked them into creating this thing to push their own agenda. And all of this goes against the God of the universe whose name is Jehovah. 1 Samuel 8, 18-19 and you shall cry out in that day because of your king which you have chosen, you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, the prophet of God, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. See, God was their king. And they said, No, we want a king. Like, we want to be like everybody else. Psalm 33, 22 said, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. Okay? They wanted another king and they didn't want to listen to Samuel, so God said, okay, go ahead and give them a, a, man, a man, a person for a king instead of me. Okay? But he's supposed to be our king. Psalms 81, 11 through 12, But my people would not listen to my voice, and Israel would none of me, that means not obey. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. That's what I'm saying. If you want to go against God, and you want to live and stay in sin, and you want to push the agenda and try to open this portal and whatever, then God's going to say, go ahead. Do what you, you know, go ahead, just like those angels. You want to leave heaven? You're not coming back. And he said, go ahead. These people teaching about UFOs and aliens are trying to open the gateways and portals and naming telescopes Lucifer and looking for aliens, which are demons, and all of this is all against God and in his face. Those people, he's going to let them pursue their own free will. He's going to say, you want to keep doing this? Go ahead. He loves them, but he's not going to force anybody to serve him. Okay, you've heard it said before, he doesn't send anybody to hell. They choose it and they send themselves there. You come to him of your own free will or you stay away from him of your own free will, okay? The elite, remember, number one is aliens and demons. Number two is the Vatican, the Pope, and the Jesuits. Number three is the Illuminati, Freemasons, and the secret societies. They're preparing to come out in the open with information on aliens, which are demons. And they have been preparing our minds with sci-fi and horror movies. I have one here the uh, TV show, The Walking Dead. That one's, I believe, about zombies, okay? Just look at the, some of the stuff that we've let come into our society. The next one is the movie, um, it's Malficient from Disney. You can clearly see. That is an evil, demonic character with horns on her head. She's representing Baphomet, which is Satan in his goat form, okay? We've got uh, skeleton t-shirts. Everybody's wearing this kind of clothes, shoe strings, tennis shoes, bumper stickers, I mean, you name it, okay? That's typical, uh, and it should only be on unbelievers. But you've got believers and everybody wearing this stuff, and that's because they're not really, either they haven't grown enough spiritually, or they're just not walking intimately with Jesus Christ to be wearing that kind of stuff. You've got it on baby clothes, um, skeleton heads and stars and stuff, look how cute. And you got your baby dressed up with something that represents death and Satan and evil. Monster Claw drinks, you know, those energy drinks and stuff. We got vampire books and shows. Look at this. There's a um, movie. And my, me and my husband watched it before we were walking with the Lord called Avatar. Remember me talking about that this stuff was real, this Greek mythology where you have part man, part horse, part mermaid, part fish, part whatever. These things were like part human looking. They had tails and stuff. and So whatever, they're part human, part animal. Okay, you got animal, a hybrid toys. This little toy is a doll horse 
with horns. So she's satanic and demonic. And this is the toys they're making now for our little kids to play with. You see this brainwash going on? All the clothes, the toys, the movies, the books, everything. Okay? It's all Satan's agenda. Now, last week I showed that the Catholic Church has been doing studies to see when is a good time to come forward with this type of information about the ETs. Okay? So that the public will be accepting of it. Their goal is to cut down the population so it will be easier to control less people. Have you submit to their authority, go along with the one world government and one world religion so that we can all live in peace. Okay, this is great delusion. Their goal is to keep you from knowing the truth who is Jesus Christ. John 14, 1 through 2. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now that's where Jesus is right now. He's getting a place ready for his bride. In Acts 1, 9 through 11, And when he, Jesus, had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven." I said all this because I want people that don't understand about Jesus coming back, about the rapture and things like that to get a picture and understand the timing of how this is going to flow. The next thing to happen is Jesus taking his bride. There's no prophecy or anything else that needs to be fulfilled for him to do that, and it is imminent. It can happen any time. Okay? He will come in the clouds and catch away or snatch up his brides, what, what uh, you've heard called the rapture, even though the rapture's not in the Bible, the words there, that's what it means. He's going to take his bride first, and then there's going to be seven years, a seven-year period of time on this earth that's going to be called the tribulation. You'll know when the tribulation has begun because there's going to be a seven-year peace treaty signed with Israel. That's what starts the tribulation period. That's when the time starts clicking, the, the clock. Okay? At that point, the age of grace or the church age will have ended. When Jesus takes his bride, the church age is done. The age of grace is over. And the people that did not know the Lord intimately, that are left behind, they're going to be left here to endure hell on earth. The only way to be saved and go to heaven during this time, if you did not get raptured, if you were not considered the bride, and maybe you weren't living your life right, but you loved the Lord and you were like, what happened? What did I do wrong? What, why am I still here? And you find yourself searching. The only way you're going to be saved during that seven-period block known as the tribulation, we have trials and tests and tribulations, but the tribulation is a seven-period block, is not to take the mark of the beast. Okay, that's in Revelation 24. They are, do not bow down or serve the beast, or the false prophet, or Satan. Don't take the mark. Don't bow down to those three. Believe in Jesus in your heart, even to the point of death. And do not deny him. That's how you'll make heaven, if you wind up in that tribulation. Okay? Um, and I want to say something to those of us that are here in America. We got to quit thinking that the Bible was written about America, because it wasn't. We're, we're his children, if you're in the Holy Spirit, but this is written about Israel, and it's centered around Israel. We have to remember, even Corey Ten Boom and different people like that that went through persecution and different things, she said she wished the missionaries would have never came there and said that, oh, you'll be raptured before anything bad happens. Now, this is where I stand. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I believe Jesus Christ will return and take his bride before the tribulation begins. Now, having said that, I live in America. We know Jade Helm and the military activity and the different things that are moving around in our country. 
We know what the elite are up to. I've been exposing that for weeks now. So the thing is, we're not guaranteed that Jesus is going to rapture us before our country goes through judgment. Okay? We're not. So what we have to do as the bride and the believers is we have to stand no matter what comes against us in our country, even to the point of death, even before we're raptured, if that's what happens. Because uh, our country just passed on Friday the um, law saying that uh, it's okay, uh, homosexual marriages are accepted or recognized in all 50 states. That's abomination to God and judgment. That has sealed the judgment of this nation. We cannot deny, like I've heard different preachers say, if God doesn't judge America and deal with us for what we've been doing, and not just about that, but that's the icing on the cake, that he would have to go back and apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. We serve a just God. We serve a fair God. He didn't judge them and burn them out with fire and brimstone and do all that just to look at us and go, we'll give you a pass. Get out a jail free card. That's not the God we serve. So we better buckle down and get ready for the ride, whatever. And if the Lord comes and takes us before anything rolls out, then praise God. We got to stay ready. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I posted something from Prophetess Mina, Mina Lee Grevin. The Lord's been giving her visions and dreams. And she said judgment is set for this nation. Martial law is coming. Her mother's a prophetess. She's had dreams about martial law. Uh, prophetess Mina has. Her son has the gift. They all have. It's coming. Okay? Um, so, those of you that don't think Jesus is real, and, and all, I want to say he is real. He is coming back for his bride first. Seven years later, he's going to return with his bride and he's going to fight the battle of Armageddon. And then he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth and we're going to go into what's called a millennial reign. He will be physically here with his feet, walking, talking, and breathing on this earth. It's real. There's pre uh, churches preaching that that's just, he, he's in our hearts and that's the kingdom. And the, No. He's physically coming back here to set up his kingdom and it's going to be in Jerusalem. Okay? Then, when we go, after he sets up his kingdom, we go into the millennial reign. It's going to be a thousand years of peace on this earth. And after that's going to come the judgment of all those who did not serve the Lord and those that lived in the millennial reign. The bride will have her judgment in heaven while the seven years of tribulation are happening here on this earth. Okay, and so the tail end of that, I said, for people to understand what's going to play out with where we are right now in prophecy, okay, and I, and I, you know, write us questions if you got questions. Please study that out. Have a secure, confident feeling in yourself to know where you stand with the Lord and what's going to happen next. Don't just be out there scared and lost. He doesn't want you to be like that. And the Bible says that his sheep know his voice. Make sure he's speaking to you and you're recognizing him. That's how you know if you're walking intimate with him or not. If you don't think you're hearing him, you need to do some searching and some seeking and some praying and some reading and drawing closer to him, okay? Because you want to know that you know that you know that you're safe. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, I, I want to... Thank you, Lord, for your churches all, all around this world. All around this world. And I want to lift up those in the church in Charleston, South Carolina, Lord. That we here in America feel like we're untouchable. And we had something so horrible happen in one of your churches, Lord. That nine people lost their lives over. Father, I thank you that those people are coming forward and saying they forgive. That's the Christian thing to do. That's what Jesus wants us to do. So many people wouldn't understand that. And Lord, we know that um, so many things are being stirred up and people are being paid to riot and the enemy is running his agenda. When he steps into your church, Lord, and does something like that, that's a direct confrontation. And it's happening here in America. And, and some of us, sometimes I feel like we were okay 
when other people, other places are getting their, you know, heads cut off and raped and tortured and stoned and, you know, that's over there and it's not here, but it's coming here. And Lord, I just thank you. I want you to give those people peace and comfort. Give them strength and endurance, Lord, as this, as this time of grieving that they're going through. Strengthen that church, Lord. Their pastor was taken from them. The one that you had placed there to lead your sheep under Christ. Father, give that church strength. Let them be a bright light shining out for this whole world to see. Heavenly Father, I want all of us to be pierced in our hearts to remember to lift up our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. My friend Pat showed a post of people that are running for their lives from uh, ISIS and they're climbing over several layers of barbed wire fences. They're dropping their kids over and they don't have anything. No possessions, no food, nothing. They're on the run. That's, that's true persecution. They're running for their lives. And they're standing, it's all because they believe in Jesus Christ. Father, we know we're in that last day, that last time, that last hour. Help us to pray for each other. Church, we got to lift each other up. we got to pray for each other. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in prayer. There's power there. Let's remember to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, even if we can't see them or talk to them or, or fellowship with them. They're out there. We're connected in the Spirit. And Father, I just want to ask you, in light of all the things that are going on, this country's headed to judgment. We see that with the military, with what our government's doing, with what we see it, Lord. We can't deny it. The weather, the everything. Father, we just ask you to forgive us for all the wickedness that we've let in, that we've even, even the church has allowed. Help us to stand strong. Help us to clean up our lives and to live holy lives before you. And to stop playing and, and walking around saying we're Christian while we're doing everything the world is doing. Father, help us. Help us to live holy. Help us to stay rooted and grounded. Help us to persevere and endure no matter what we face. Even if we have to be rounded up. Even if we go into the FEMA camps. Even if we're separated from our kids. Teach your kids to stand with Jesus and not deny him no matter what, even to the point of death. You have to do it. It's a hard message, but we've got to do it. Know that even if you're torn away from your family, that each one of you has made a commitment not to deny Jesus no matter what. And Heavenly Father, even if we face a guillotine, even if we face being shot down, even if we face these things on our shores in America before you rapture your bride, because just like Prophetess Mina said, there's so many people playing church. They'll cuss you out in a heartbeat and turn around and say, I'm Christian. They'll slap your face and look right at you and say, I'm Holy Spirit filled. And we got to stop this nonsense. We got all these people in America saying they're Christian. And they're not living holy lives. And you're not allowed to say nothing or you'll be called out for judging them. And the thing is, there has to come a crushing. And the crushing is coming. And when the crushing comes, and when it, the pain is there, and the hurt is happening, then people will call out to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. Help me, Lord. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please have mercy on me. So, Lord, I'm just asking you, protect your children. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your children all around this world, Father. I pray a double hedge of protection, just like you had a hedge around Job. I pray a double hedge of protection around your children. And, Heavenly Father, I ask you to keep your righteous right hand over your children all over this world. And for those that haven't come out of the darkness, I pray that you draw them by your Holy Spirit to the cross of Jesus Christ. I pray for their salvation. And Heavenly Father, 
I want to ask you to move by your spirit. We need miracles, signs, and wonders. We need healings all across this world. We need healings, Father. Heal, heal, heal your children and even heal the ones that don't believe because they'll a lot of times believe after being healed. Father, we need the latter rain poured out on us. We need to be walking in your power and your glory and your anointing. And I pray your favor over your children. In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I just want to say that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, today you can make that change. You can come to Jesus today and have salvation and the gift of eternal life, the promise of eternal life, and you can know that you're saved and going to heaven. It's easy to do. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Please come into my heart. I do believe that you died and that you rose again from the dead, that you died on the cross for me, that you are seated at God's right hand. And I'm asking you now to help me to live for you all the days of my life. I'm asking you to be my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Praise God. If you pray that prayer and you meant it sincerely from your heart, then you're saved. And now what you want to do is you want to get into a good church that teaches the whole Word of God. Okay, all of the Bible is true. And when you go to a church that believes in the whole Word and believes in God the Father, God the Son, and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you're going to be uplifted by other believers that can encourage you and build you up in your faith and that can help you to walk your walk with God. And you also want to read your Bible every day. The best book to start with if you're brand new um, to salvation, newly saved, is the book of John in the New Testament. And you want to read every day, even if it's just a little bit. That's going to feed your spirit and help you grow spiritually. And also, you're going to want to pray. When you pray, that's you speaking to God. When you read his word, that's him speaking to you. He can speak in many other ways, but for sure he speaks to us through his word today. So I'm um, happy that you're saved, happy that you prayed that prayer and you watched our message. If you'd like to, we would love to hear from you. And just send us an email. We're at threeheartschurch.org. Just drop us a line and tell us that you met Jesus today. And we thank you for watching. God 